We've had a great conference here and we've learned a bunch of stuff. There is much more information, there's more discussions, there's more knowledge sharing to be done. And, uh, and that is, has been Quentin's passion for a long time. So I'm gonna let him tell you how to continue this collaboration uh, at, even after we leave. Awesome, thank you. So how many feel like they drunk from a fire hose last two days? Me too, all right. So before I get started, I want everyone to stand up. No, no, no singing. Stand up, take a step to the left. Take a step to the right. All right, now you can sit down. All right. No, no matter what I've told you, no matter what I end up telling you, I can tell everyone that I've uplifted you and I've moved you. So, <clears throat> all righty. So, yeah, I am Q. This is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about an overview with G Central and then some of the initiatives, and specifically one initiative we're actually announcing today and is going live today. So, <clears throat> okay. So I'm Q, I currently work for Testeract. I just recently joined them about two months ago, leaving uh, being a civil servant for the Air Force. I'm uh, one of the board of directors and uh, the secretary of G Central, which I'll talk about. I'm an administrator for the LabVIEW Wiki, and the LabVIEW Wiki is kind of an unofficial sponsor of the GDEVCON. We made sure that they had a nice big front uh, location on the front page of the LabVIEW Wiki. The Lavi Wiki is community run, so please contribute. If you want have some insight to some feature in LabVIEW, go write a page about it. If you have a blog from your own website, pretty much every page has a section at the bottom saying external links. If you have some blog that pertains to something, go add the link to your blog there so that we can all find out how to get more information. Um, Q Software Innovations is my own consulting thing. I don't do as much with it anymore. Um, but if you've ever heard of Q Controls, I wrote that uh, uh, from Q Software Innovations. And obviously, I'm a, a certified LabVIEW architect and a LabVIEW champion. <clears throat> so here's how you can get a hold of me. It's kind of small on these slides, isn't it? But uh, Q at testrack.com. Q at qsi.dev or quentin.aldridge at gcentral.org. I can, all of those will get a hold of me depending on what role, I guess, you're getting a hold of me in. I'm also on LinkedIn, Twitter, and just about everything else. That's my avatar on most things, is the LabVIEW zealot, is what I call it. <laughs> all righty. <clears throat> so, quick overview of G Central. G Central is a nonprofit and what our specialty is, is we're trying to provide platforms and tools necessary to help people find, share, and co-develop G reusable code. And as a nonprofit, we can be independent and driven solely by what the community needs, not by any kind of profit margin, not by what makes sense on return of investment, except that it benefits the community as our return of investment. Our board of directors right now, our president is Chris Cellino. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us. Uh, also on the board, myself, uh, Danny, Francois, and Eric is our NI representative on the board. <clears throat> but we're more than just the board. Uh, getting started, we had a steering committee that helped us figure out what our mission was going to be and helped steer kind of what the initiatives we want to do. Uh, we also have a couple of emeritus board members. You probably heard Fabiola's name come up a lot. She was instrumental in helping us get started. Uh, Eli used to be our NI representative, but has gone on to other, other uh, NI roles. Uh, some of the thought leaders that have helped us, we've had meetings with uh, Jim, uh, David Moore from More Good Ideas, uh, Javier, Sam has helped us just people that we've asked questions and got feedback and tried to, to decide what our community would most benefit from. And then we've had volunteers. Matthias from Studio Bods wrote our current, or parts of our current website. Derek Bombrito is currently our main developer on our new website that's not quite live yet. You can go visit our new website though at test.gcentral.org if you want to. 
<coughs> uh, Devin Chan has been our, our graphic designer. Uh, Peter uh, Foster has also helped on our website. And then Matt and Navin has also helped. And Matt is going to come up later on in this presentation, too. <coughs> so you can find us at gdev, uh, excuse me, gcentral.org and also on all these other platforms. We have social media stuff going on and also a special section on Lava and we're on obviously the NI forums as well. <clears throat> so I've got another polling thing. I'm gonna ask the audience. If you go to www.menti.com and use that code, <clears throat> this is a word cloud. So if people repeat the same thing, things are going to appear bigger. So what would it take to complete and publish an open source toolkit you've created or you would like to create? So this is kind of like, what's holding you back? What do you need to be able to publish something open source? <clears throat> Hopefully this will pop up live. It's supposed to. If not, I am going to check it on my end too. Is it going? Oh, okay. There we go. Give it about 30 more seconds or so. I think I'm seeing a trend that people need more time, maybe some funding, money, tooling. All righty, I'm going to move on to the next one, all right? Let's see, if I can, I've got to figure out how. Oops, that didn't work. It's not moving on to the next slide. Maybe I have to do it on here, I don't remember. Get it to go to the next slide. It keeps moving on. There's another question I want to ask, but it's. I'm not sure how to make it the live question now. Yeah, but it's not the next question. I'm trying to move on. Hmm. Weird, I have this working, but it's the first time I've used this in a presentation, so. Nope, it's not letting me move on unless I want to skip the question. I'm going to. Oh, that's why it's taken both of them as the same one. Well, this one was supposed to be a different question, and it was just a moment ago. <laughs> I 
Well, the second question, I'll just ask it then. The second question was, <clears throat> what toolkits do you have in mind that you would like to have made, or do you have I what ideas do you have? Like, what toolkits do you need? And I wish I could have that up here because it would be really awesome to see everyone's answers. I am going to try to hit refresh and see what will happen, but if it doesn't happen, dang. <laughs> to walk around and ask people. I will say uh, okay. class refactoring tools is something that I think we should get. Also tools for oh. visualizing classes and dependencies and managing those. Who else has ideas? I think Hope has something over there, yeah? Second yours. Uh, yeah, well, I have like a running list of stuff because I have plenty of ideas. I just need the time to make them. But main ones is a tool for renaming actors and a tool for renaming messages, which we know is a pain. And then like a bunch of different cue controls that I want to create for like nice, nice controls. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, seconding that, especially with actors, it's a huge pain. If you have a method with a message and you want to rename that method, you have to rename the method, you create a new message, you find all the places the old message was called, you replace all the old message calls, and then you delete the message off disk. And there's like a ton of different operations like that that are just a huge pain. So just better class visualizations, better class handling. And again, what I said before about something that'll uh, slap me whenever I do something wrong with my dependencies. Uh, I also think there's room for some tools for around like building like GCLI plugins for like building lab U or uh, VIPM packages and things like that. Uh, Ed Hope has more. This is like a big one and I like this is an idea I've had forever and like always wanted to develop but I think it would be really hard. But basically a live VI analyzer like you know, when, you, when you're using Visual Studio and you're typing, mm -hmm. it like underlines it and sometimes it'll say like, oh, recommended, your line is too long, you should break up this line, or like, oh, recommended, you know, you're, like it, it'll give you style guidelines as you go. And if we had that in LabVIEW just as you go, I think it would be so amazing. Along those lines, I think it'd be kind of cool to have something that would like run your tests automatically or more often in LabVIEW. Uh, I don't know, there's probably some stuff that does that, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, some sort of tool that does uh, keyboard navigation through Windows um, for like, I drilled down through a stack of VIs and I shortcut key and it pops me back to some memorized point. Um, or remember, I hit a button, it remembers these are the windows that are open right now. 30 minutes later, I hit that button, it rolls back to that state. Um, I've built ad hoc tools on various points and I have some that are in sketchy modes that I can pull up. I would love to have one that was more formalized. Uh, I could see something maybe for making VI Analyzer more useful. Um, I know I just find that like it takes a while to run it, and you know if you run it on everything, even files that haven't changed, it, it's kind of pain. Take a couple more. Uh, yep. IDE visualizations and uh, something like uh, a semantic zoom feature, which I think was played around with the NXG, where if I if I want to drill down into just that one VI. This way. I I want to be able to. I don't want the other fifty VIs that I had to drill down to. Uh, to be part of my window clutter. I just wanted that one like and I want everything else to disappear. Then. That, wasn't a plant. That, that wasn't a plant, but you'll see, that was perfect. So, so these are ideas of tools that we want, but you're asking tools to Yeah, make I couldn't things. get it to go on to the next question. No, no. oh, is that the? That's the previous, that's what the was previous the other, question. Okay, okay. The, the next question was, what tools would you like to have created? Or, yeah, yeah. So let's move on, okay. <clears throat> so let's see if we can get it to actually go to my next slide now. Come on, there we go. So problem statement. So as far as being able to get tools done, it seems like there's, there's two main problems. One is, I, you know, I don't have, I, may, I might have a tool that's like 90% done or 80% done, but I don't have the time, I don't have the money to really polish it up and get it ready for public consumption, right? The other problem is I have this really cool idea, but I don't know how to get started. I don't know what to do to get it to plug in, to do whatever it needs to do to make it cool. But, it, but I know that this is something that everyone's been wanting. So remember all of these ideas that people have thrown out? 
and keep those in the, in the back of your head through, for the rest of this presentation. So I'm going to introduce a new thing called the G Idea Exchange. <clears throat> Our mission is to provide G programming to the G programming community a way to share development of tools and resources. We're going to do this by allowing the developer to complete the tools. We're going to help them get the money they need, the resources they need to complete the tools that they have that are almost done for public use. We're also going to help provide that opportunity for other developers to go maybe take your idea and to go finish it. So essentially what I'm proposing is a crowdfunding for programming ideas. So instead of having like the LabVIEW idea exchange, this would be a LabVIEW idea exchange, but the way that you vote is you go sponsor an idea. Say that idea is worth 50 bucks to me. If, that, if we got that tool, I would donate 50 bucks for that tool. Or even if, even if it's only five bucks. But the idea is that we, as a community, start being able to, to uh, contribute to start sharing the, the resources. So this is live now. <clears throat> so how to contribute to the GID exchange at gcentral.org. First off is to submit an idea. And so I do have a video, but I'm going to try to just do it live here. We'll see how well that goes. So I'm going to go to gie.gcentral.org. And this is live now. You can go on here right now. You can scroll down, and it says how to contribute, how to submit an idea. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in here and click on, OK, I'm going to submit an idea. Let's see, it probably saved my work from when I was experimenting with this for my demo. But OK, I'm going to put in my email address. Will it? QSI dev. My name is Q. Let's, let's put yours in. Let's say I want a semantic Zoom. And then you fill out your description. If you know a cost, you know about how much maybe hours or, or money it's going to cost, you can put that in. So this is keep me from having to open 100 windows. And then I'm going to submit my answer. And that's going to go to an email to me right now. <laughs> but that's how you submit your ideas. All right. The next step then is to sponsor an idea. To sponsor an idea on that web, going back to the G idea exchange, you basically just can come down here below and see the different uh, projects that are available. You click on one of those, and I'm going to talk about this one more in depth in just a minute, but you click on one of these, you can get all the information about it. There's going to be a video about it on this one. <clears throat> and then I'm going to click Donate. I'm going to pick how much I want to donate. If I want to donate a monthly reoccurring thing or a one-time thing, I can submit how much. Now, this website that we're using is not free. We actually have to cover some transaction costs, so if you want to add on the amount necessary to cover the transaction costs, you can do that, and that would be very helpful. Otherwise, we just have to eat it out of your donation. And then this is the project that you're planning to donate to. Click Next. Put your name, email, and this is where you put your financial information. It uses uh, Stripe as the back uh, end part of this, so all of your financial information is secure. I'm not going to type in my financial information live right here, right now, but then you just hit charge and you'll get an email back saying how much was charged and that because we're a nonprofit then that is actually a tax write offable uh, receipt all righty so that's how you donate <clears throat> so going back to my slides 
I'm going to skip the uh, video that I just demoed. The last thing we need is to become a committee member. Right now, basically, out of the G Central uh, board of directors, I'm pretty much the one running this. And I'm not going to be able to run it by myself. <laughs> so I'm asking for people to uh, become a subcommittee of G Central that will run the G Idea Exchange. And what you will do is you'll see these incoming ideas from the, from the uh, submission form. You'll evaluate the ideas, and then we'll have to create a page on that uh, uh, G Idea Exchange site for that project and then start advertising it, like put it out on social media, hey, there's this new idea, go support it, go donate to it. You'll have to set some goals on what the dollar amount needs to be in order to complete that idea, and then help the developer follow it through into completion. Now, in the case that it is the developer that wants to do it that submits the idea, then we'll pay the developer to finish that idea. If it's the other scenario where you don't know who's going to do it, we're going to basically broadcast, okay, we have the dollar ne dollars necessary, we have $1,000 to finish the, to create this toolkit, and we're going to bid it out and submit it out to the community and let one of you bid for it and, and hopefully get it and build it and create it for the community. A stipulation is all the source has to always be open source. So all of these are for open source projects. So. The, you can't own the code afterward. The code is owned by everybody, essentially. So, so if you're interested in becoming a committee member, just email me. Uh, probably my G Central email for this case, so that I can keep track of that. Okay, now to come to what you were asking for, Mike. All right, VIP. So we are starting one project off the bat called VI Peak, and the, all proceeds. Oh, you have a question. Oh, um, well, I just had a question about that. You said it needs to be open source and that you can't own the code. So like, <clears throat> does that mean, well, cause if it's open source, you usually still have a license. Like our open source stuff is like owned by MGI as you know, BSD license or whatever. So is it gonna be owned by G Central BSD license or whatever, or is it still can be owned by you with whatever open source license you want. You, you know, I think this is kind of still in process, but I think we would want you. I guess I guess what we would say is you would own it, you would own it, but it would have to be published under a, a, a open source license. That's what I guess I, I was really meaning. So, okay. Go, going on to VIP, this is a project that that uh, uh, Matt Jacobson had the idea, came to us. Uh, originally, we were going to have Darren help us out, but he was too busy. So, um, so Matt Jacobson and I took the took his idea and ran with it. And all the proceeds that go towards this, this we're going to donate this for free. The the VIP. But everything that you sponsor for this is going to help us stand up the GID Exchange. Because it's the GID Exchange, we're paying a platform to host this. It's not free. We have to pay a yearly subscription for this. And hopefully, after a while, after we get enough projects, it will be self-sustaining. But for right now, we're trying to get enough money to basically have this run long term. So <clears throat> as an incentive to sponsoring this, we're going to create VIP. So what is VIP? VIP is a different way to zoom your VIs. Now it's not zooming in on the block diagram, it is a semantic zoom. What that means is from a single window, you can drill down through a VI hierarchy and you'll see the hierarchy on the side and then you can back up through the hierarchy really easily. So that if you're debugging and you're going through and drilling down, you don't have 100 windows open. <clears throat> So it replaces the navigation window, voids hundreds of windows being open. You can navigate quickly up and down the call chain, and it also works with all these different types of VIs. I do have a video. I don't know if the sound is going to go through. Do we need to plug the sound in? Yeah. Is it this one? That is likely it. Okay. All right. Let's see. 
I need to unmute mine. Okay, so this is VIP here. Seeing all the different polymorphic instances here. Now you're seeing the different dynamic dispatch instances. On malleable VIs, it shows you both the actual malleable VI and the instance that is that instance. Now it's showing you a missing VI and where it's located, or where it thinks it's located. Hold on just a moment, the video will be over. So special thanks to Matt Jacobson for coming up with the idea. He started out the code and he and I have been doing a lot of the coding on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you had a question? Yeah, that looks great. Um, I already have features I would want added to it. So like, uh, I was going to ask, for the missing VI, mm -hmm. could you have something where I can just point to where it actually is and then update it? Mm. And then second question, mm -hmm. um, is there something that could help with conflicts? Because a lot of times the resolve conflict window is not helpful <laughs> and it, it'll load and it won't let me choose the one that I know is the one I want. <laughs> I don't know on that one. I don't know what it would take to, to do that, <laughs> but... Uh, building a resolve conflict tool would be on my bounty list. I want something that does that. Yeah, okay. But as far as adding new features to it, uh, a little bit later, I'm gonna show you the, the GitHub repo where this is located at. It's not yet finished. That's why I had to do it as a video rather than a demo because I didn't trust doing it as a demo yet. Um, but that's how this works, right? This isn't a tool that's 100% done yet. Hopefully we will deliver it to you pretty soon. But if you want it early, you can go to the GitHub repo and, and even fork and do something and, and add on to it, you know, become one of the co-developers. So could the call I, to action. Oh, could I just ask a design yeah. decision? Why replace the navigation window instead of just simply adding a menu item? Uh, because no one uses the navigation window. Um, <laughs> okay. If I'm refactoring large monolithic block diagrams, I so, use it. So this was something Matt Jacobson wanted, but it is, and I, I, as far as I understand, I have, to, I have to confer with him to be sure, but he did put an INI flag in that you could make, turn it on and off. 
Now, how do you invoke it if you turn it off? We're gonna have to maybe add something to the tools menu or something to invoke it if you, if you turn it off. Uh, I think that's what his plan was to have the INI file at least. I'll have to confer with him to make sure that that is the case. But, but we thought that it was a more valuable navigation tool than the navigation window. But if you don't like that, well, as we've learned just about anything that NI adds as a new tool, they have to have a way to turn it off because everyone complains. So there is gonna be a way to turn it off if you don't want it, but anyway. Hey, hey Quinn. Yeah. Can you, for, for something that's, that's public, like this is a great example, it's in, it's in Git. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have community development, but there's a costing on it. Can you talk to that expectation of like, like divvying out the fundages if it's a Okay, for, for this one, yeah. it's just going to be open. The cost is going to be good. All of the proceeds are going to come to uh, J Central. Now, for other things, maybe that will have to be an issue we haven't worked out yet. I don't know. But the idea would be that we'd be just paying one developer to finish it. So I don't know about divvying out the cost. If it's now, now, it might not be open source initially, but once they publish it, then it should be open source. So, you know, there's some, there's some, there's some logistics that we're still working out on this. So I'll have to, I'll have to take that back and think about that and figure out how we're going to handle that. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have to see how we're going to handle that. So the last part is the call to action. So... <clears throat> Go sponsor VIP, help this platform be a success so that we can get tools made for the community. That's our whole goal. Now, now we, some, of the, some of the funds are going to help us maintain this and is gonna to go to G Central to help us maintain this. But hopefully by and large, all of the funds will be going, most of the funds will be going to creating tools for the community to help the community do stuff. As a nonprofit, we're not trying to make any any kind of money off of this except for helping maintain it and have it go forward. Also, go submit your ideas. We need, we're, we're not going to make this be a success without you know, multiple projects to be there, things for people to go uh, sponsor, to vote on, uh, then sponsor an idea. Go look through all of the ideas and think, okay, well, what's this worth to me? How much money will this save me if this tool was created Will it save me $500 in the long run? Will it save me $1,000 in the long run? Okay, I can sponsor that much money because I know it will be a return on investment to me in the long run. And then please volunteer to help me out so I'm not the only committee member on the GID Exchange Committee. So, so summary? Oh. Well, you can summarize in that Okay, summary, GIE dot gcentral.org is where you go to this. Uh, someone said I should probably change it to G-I-E-X, but I kind of like G-I-E because in like Scottish, that means to give. So I kind of like that. Our, our main website, uh, www.gcentral.org. And then this is the GitHub repo that uh, Matt has started. And then please call to action, do these things. Think of all of the things that you've learned the last two days, ideas that you can help to, to grow the community. And we can do questions now. And that's pretty much all I have after that. <clears throat> so correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that G Central has some money in the bank. It does. And uh, is G Central planning to use any of that money to help fund projects like this? And I guess if not, what? else is G Central planning to do with mm -hmm. that money? Well, uh, that is kind of a hard question. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Thanks a lot, Brian. Uh, yes, G Central could t turn around and use some of that money to projects that, that they thought would benefit the community. Um, we have been kind of sitting on the money that we've been given so far because we, help, we don't have any other income coming in yet. And so we've been really, really leery about spending money until we know more money's coming in. Um, what we have been working on is, is our website to make better tools to, so this is kind of a roadmap thing. 
Oh, do you want to no, speak up? Go, go so, so we're trying to make uh, better tools to find and 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 uh, reuse code. Um, JKI has done a lot of that for us with their VIPM.io. So we're trying not to stomp on their feet, but we'd want to make sure that there's other places that we could cover and help. Um, one of the things that we want to work on is to create a public uh, NIPM feed. Uh, so we have a community NIPM uh, repository or, or, or repo. We actually have that in place now, but until our website goes live, we don't have the user management part in place to make it so that we could police who is pub publishing stuff to it. Um, okay, so I will else? also, yeah, I will also add in. Brian, to the comment you made about how we're spending the funding. Right now, we're looking at using the funding in G Central to, to um, cover CapEx expenses. So as an example, we actually bought this service so that we could put it live. Mm -hmm. And we're intending to use uh, operational expenses would be covered by people using this service. So that's actually the breakdown. Um, as Q said, like, could we change that in the future? Could we sponsor some of these ourselves? Yeah, we could. But we want to see how successful this goes and how, how much we can drive it first. Yeah, this is this is very much an experiment. I don't know of any other programming community that has a crowdfunding idea exchange like we're trying to start. We have more questions. Oh, oh Jim. Yeah, so this is the and first time that I've seen the, the, the test that. site. And so, Eric, it sounded like NI was sponsoring kind of these platforms. The what what kind of NI packages would people be sharing? Like what kind of tools would be anti packages? Because my understanding is that that's like drivers and uh, standalone applications, and that really like VIPM is for LabVIEW add-ons. Uh, Eric, yeah, Eric can answer it better than. All right, so your question was what would go into that repository that's the NI packages. Um, they're in the, what they're looking at doing with us would making it, making it be something that you could build as a queryable interface, which op operates outside of what the um, NI package manager does by default, right? NI package manager looks directly at NI's serviceable website to do everything. This one would be hosted by G Central and might contain things that doesn't, don't exist on NI's website. Okay, so like things that are NI packages that aren't on NI's website that would be like standalone applications or drivers and things like that? Yeah, there, yes, and there's a lot of uh, open discussion for how that would work and how it would relate to NI's website since there would probably be okay. some overlap. So, and it makes sense too that that could be useful like with NXG coming out that there'd be a lot of NXG packages as NI packages. But I was just checking out the test site and it basically all the content looks basically like it is VIPM.io content. Mm -hmm. And all basically it's just a big splash of VIPM. I'm the, the, curious the, what, what new things it adds of value. So the test website right now is indexing all of uh, VIPM stuff too, because really we want it to be a one-stop shop to find all of that stuff. But, but what, it's, what's the all of this stuff? Because there's nothing else on there. Well, like what would it be? Hey, Jim. It would be the combined content from NI and from uh, the VIPM IO and from any other place that we could find a repository that we could index. But it's right now it's not showing the NI vert part of that repository. Oh, okay. But that's the intention. All right. That's that's why it's not live yet. <laughs> um, but also to answer your question, right now we have a breakdown in in our package repositories because let's say I do publish a package. And it has a requirement for now. You did kind of solve this partially with with Dragon um, once once that's live. But what if I create a package and it has dependencies on VIPM stuff and dependencies on NIPM stuff? Where do I publish it? You know, or how do I cross that bridge? And the idea is maybe you publish it in both. You publish an NIPM and a VIPM of the package, and it makes it easier for whatever makes it easier for the community to consume that is what we're what we're after so we have some other we had someone back you're good um i i think like your your question about like vipm versus nipm and like if these are development tools how are they going to be done through through nipm instead of vipm like 
for some development tools, obviously, yeah, like if it's if it's going to be in the palettes, I guess it needs to be VIPM. But some development tools, I think, can be done with NIPM. Like, for example, Solution Explorer is a development tool, but it's actually built. So even right now, Solution Explorer is installed through NIPM. So I guess it would be like that, right? Yeah, there could be other stuff. There could be other avenues, too, where we're, we're helping to find other source code through other uh, repositories, GitLab, GitHub. Bitbucket, maybe we're going to be able to index those at some point. The, those are all kind of in our mind as, as possible ideas. Any other questions about GID Exchange? Are you going to join? Are there plans to incentivize donations somehow, like through recognition or a leaderboard? Or I have no idea. Just so we do. Obviously, as a nonprofit, we do accept donations from companies as well, just straight to, to G Central. And for those, we do have an incentive package as far as uh, promotion on the web page. If this becomes a, a good one-stop shop for people to find code, we're going to drive a lot of traffic. And it, seeing your logo there is going to help promote your company. And so... Our, our, our plan was to start advertising and get, you know, a lot of, a lot of you to contribute to G Central, uh, go after some of the big companies like the SpaceX and, and Tesla and other, uh, Microsoft and other ones, uh, to, to donate to G Central to make this a, a great platform for everybody. But until we get our first website live, we don't really have a product to sell you, <laughs> you know, to, to contribute. And so we're really waiting till our website goes live. But, you know, if you want to help us, one of the things we're going to be considering soon is paying someone to finish off our website. Because right now it's been all volunteers that have helped us and we need more funding to be able to make that happen. So if you want to contribute, uh, you can go to just uh, www.gcentral.org. There's already information on how to contribute and, you know, let us know. So... Other questions? Are you moved and uplifted? Heck yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to ask me more questions, I will be here for a while. So, cool. All right. Thank I'm you. On. Thank you for All right. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Quinn.